Hello redesigners, it's Thursday and I'm CC from CC Restyled. I'm a brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima and uh, we're gonna do some fun things today. So, um, hmm. Again, I apologize for being late, but this time it wasn't my fault. It's never a dull moment here at Estudio de CC because um, we deal with some stuff. It's, it's always fun around here, always fun. Anyway, so we got our technical difficulties worked out and here we are. So today, as promised, we're working on a jewelry box, a good old JB. Hi everybody, if you're hopping on, say hello. And if you wanna let me know where you're tuning in from, that'd be awesome. I'm in Indianapolis, it's all swell and good here. But, um, <laughs> oh gosh, I tell you what. One thing happens, you know, and then the whole day kind of snowballs. Anyways, so today we're working on our good old JB. And if you read my description, um, you know, I feel like jewelry boxes are the perfect kind of either starter uh, project or, and I'm not gonna lie, sometimes they are just as difficult as the actual furniture, big furniture itself, but it's a good um, space saver. So you have less uh, excuses to make to the old man or the old woman about why you're taking up all their space. So there's that, but also, you know, they're just like little dressers or chests and um, they're, you know, wood. You can do the same things to the jewelry boxes as you can to big old furniture. So that's why it's perfect um, to demonstrate on and it's also perfect to practice on if you're trying to learn a technique like blending or your practice your stenciling or, or any, anything, products, techniques, whatever, new products that are new to you. Um, so we're gonna jump right on in and I'm not gonna show you my whole jewelry box yet. I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you the side that we are embellishing today. Okay, so that's the side That we're working on which we're obviously gonna make some molds for I mean What did you expect my middle name is molds and then the top here, which um, I'm sure you've seen my skull and flower uh, deals I love skulls, okay, what can I say? Sue me, I could love worse, right? So um, yes, we got some skull, flowery, kind of sugary, sugar skull inspo going up on the top there. So um, obviously I have half my box painted because th that way we can create our molds, wait for those to set up, we will, after those set up, we'll attach them and um, then we can move on to the other parts that have already been painted. So. There's that. So let's go ahead and get out our molds, shall we? Which ones is she gonna use? Which ones is she gonna use? Well, my friends, I'm gonna use all of them. Big surprise, right? So starting off with, I love these size flowers of these molds. Um, there's lots of flower molds out there, yes. But the size flowers on watercolor, uh, watercolor floral um, from Prima, Perfect size for jewelry boxes, perfect size for fitting in little small spaces where you have a little hole. Maybe you need to um, fill in a little space on your project. So watercolor floral. Yes, there's a transfer um, called watercolor floral as well. And the flowers, I believe, match the transfer. So little tip for you. Um, we'll put that little, little guy right there. Then we've got, of course, you know I love me some Finnebear molds. And we've got some, so when I show you the molds and we start making them, I wanna see if anybody can guess what I'm gonna do with them. What are the fates of these molds? What's my, where am I going with this? Um, then we've got um, Mechanica, which is these gears, okay? Gears. Um, Donna, I think that that is a moth, okay? I'm calling it a moth. It's probably a butterfly or, or maybe a bee or a fly. I don't know, but to me it's a moth, cause I said so. So we've got some Mechanica, these gears, right? Mm -hmm. Fancy. Uh, what else she got in her magic bag? Grungy frames, okay? So on the grungy frames, this is one of the new um, Finnebear molds. I think she just released it a couple, three weeks ago maybe. So um, on this one, I love it, love it, love it, but we're only using these little pieces. So um, unfortunately you won't get to see the entire goodness of that mold, but trust me, it's goodness. And then, and then, and then, and then, oh, botanical blossoms. What is she doing with flowers and gears and frames? What is she doing? Botanical blossoms is the perfect little floral sprig, little um, twig of flowers. 
So we got that one going on there. And skull and bones I used on the top. Okay, so I used the skull. Already used that one. Then uh, we've got machine parts. I've got some extra from the other side. Um, so these are new release mold from Finnebear as well. So those came out with the skull and bones and the uh, rusty, uh, grungy frames. Rusty pipelines. Who's ready for rusty pipelines, right? Um, I am. So we're gonna be using rusty pipelines, flowers, gears, and all the things. So rusty pipelines. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick um, rundown on how to pour your molds out of resin. If you need to see, if you're scared of resin, A, don't be. But B, some people don't like to start off with resin. I didn't start off with resin. I started off with air dry the modeling material. Most people do. It's a little easier to digest, not literally digest, but you know, wrap your head around how it works, get a feel for the molds. And also um, it's, it's less intimidating. So once you graduate from the air dry clay, um, you can either go to hot glue or you can skip the hot glue and go straight to resin. So uh, resin is a two part process. And let's see. I use uh, Lumalite White, which is also called Amazing Casting Resin. If you get it in the craft store, it's called Amazing, Ca Amazing Casting Resin. If you get it by the gallons, it's called a Lumalite White on the Lumalite website. So I'm going to grab some gloves real quick. And um, once again, PPE, always recommended. I wear gloves. I'm in a well-ventilated space that now has power back on and um, protective eyewear. I would definitely say maybe that would help. I got epoxy in my eye the other day. It wasn't even while I was using it. It was way later in the day. I rubbed my eye and had some on my hand. So PPE, maybe I should just wear PPE 24 seven because I'm not the most graceful. So that's a thing. Um, so we want a vessel to stir our resin in or mix our resin in. I like to use these silicone jobbies because guess what? Once it cures, you just peel it out no cleaning necessary. I'm a huge advocate of not having to clean things that you don't have to, right? It's not lazy, it's efficient. Okay, so I also like to use these uh, silicone stirry jobs. Okay, um, same reason, peel off. So most resins are a one to one ratio. Okay, one part to one part. One part A, one part B equal um, most but not all, but most. So we're going to go ahead and start off with part A. Let's see. I think I can move, scoot you over here and you can see a little bit better. Or maybe I'll move that out of the way and you can see better. Huh, how's that? Okay, so. All right, there we go. Part A. We're going to go ahead and do... Um, when I'm using the fast, the quick setting resin, I don't pour more than two ounces at a time. Um, to mix up because before you get it poured it will set up on you you have about a two minute working time um, and then about a 10 minute demold unless you throw a fan on it then you can get it to work a little faster but um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and pour two ounces um, I've got my digital scale here you can use you can you can measure by weight or volume I like to do it by weight when it's this small of an amount it's just more accurate so I've got two ounces, I'm pouring slowly, so I hit the two as close as possible. 9.1.94, see how she can do. Boom, 2.01, I'll take it. Okay, so you can do the math and then pour in your part B to, you know, four, which is one to one. Or you can just reset it because I am just, I feel more comfortable. And we learned that in science class, okay? We learned to just reset it and not, and not add them and do the math. So I'm just being proper. I'm just a scientist. All right, so 2.01, as close to that as we can possibly get with our part B. Yeah. Yes, I'm, a, I'm so messy with this stuff. I can't believe the scale actually works. I shouldn't say that, it'll stop. 1.9, 2.05, I'll take it. 0 0.04 difference. That's not the worst I've ever had, so we're gonna go with it. So first, we're gonna pour our, oh, let's see. 
We're gonna mix it really well first, actually. So I like these um, silicone beakers from Amazon because if you've ever poured epoxy into a mold, you'll know that it's very messy and it runs and drips, but these beakers have the little um, oh, spout on them and it makes them pour much more accurately. Okay, more accurately. I shouldn't say much more, but um, let's see. Stir it up really well. You wanna make sure your resin's stirred very, very well or you're gonna end up with a gooey mess. Nobody wants a gooey mess. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our teeny tiny, um, these little corner things here, I don't even know what they're called, like circuit boards or something. We're using those on the drawer faces, okay? So on the drawers, we got these circuit board thingies. We've got some little cogs, okay? I got gears, cogs, whatever you wanna call them. Um, and then you wanna pour low and slow, okay? As low and slow as possible. Um, if you over pour, that's okay, but try not. I always try to get a perfect mold, but rarely it happens, sometimes. Not all the time. Okay, low and slow. That way, if you're low, you get less bubbles. If you're slow, you get to fill up more little gaps and um, more. you're more accurate, that kind of deal. So let's go ahead and, oh gosh. Um, I'm just gonna pour in this little flower here. Um, so I wanna do some rusty pipelines. I'm gonna pour in, I'm not doing all of them, um, I'm going to do this little spigot here because we like spigots where you turn the water off and on, you know. Then the pipes go here and there. It's going to be amazing. Just wait. You're going to love it, you guys. You're going to love it. Did anybody figure out what I'm doing with the rusty pipelines, the flowers, and the frames yet? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? I'm going to look and see. And if somebody nailed it, then you are the winner. You win. Big fat. Congratulations. All right, so my watercolor floral, love these. Um, I'm gonna kind of pick up my pace here a little bit, whoops, which means I'm gonna get more sloppy. And then I just want a good um, variety of sizes of my cogs, okay? So I don't really have certain ones in particular I'm trying to fill in, I just want a variety of sizes. So we're just gonna pour all willy-nilly until we get some filled in. It's starting to set up on me, so I need to hurry up is what that means. Once it starts to get real thick and not run so well, you need to hurry up. All right, so boom. So now I take my um, whatever I was stirring with, or you can take a stir stick, paint stir stick, and if it's overflowed, or over, if it has overfloweth, um, you just wanna scrape the back flat, okay? Scrape it flush, that one looks good. Scrape it flush to get that back flat. Um, as, you, as flat as you can, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect if for whatever reason, when you're done, you still don't have a flat back. When you're going to apply your molds, um, you can sand down the backs. You know, what? I'm just gonna leave these because they're starting to set up, so, oh gosh. Um, you can sand down the back and that will take care of your um, concave or convex back, whatever you end up with. Um, okay, so boom, mold making 101. Mold making with quick setting resin 101 easy peasy, right? We're going to let that set for about 10 minutes or a few minutes less than that on the fan. Okay. So while we were waiting for those to set up, I'm going to go ahead and show you the top of my box. The top of my box is, let's see. Oh, well, I mean, I did show you the top, but we're going to work on the top of, of the box. So guess what? Not only um, do I have these pretty skull and flowery molds and all that jazz up top, um, I also have, actually, you know what, I'm going to move y'all out into the little uh, clippy clip above so you can see better. Okay, I'm going to move you in here. Ooh, that way you can see better. Hopefully it will not tell me error for rotating my screen or what, what have you. Sorry, this, if this is the least of my technical difficulties is having to switch jobbies here, um, I'm good. We already got our um, meltdown out of the way today, didn't we? With that power going out, huh? All right, but we're back in business. That's all that matters, right? Don't look, don't look backwards, look forward, right? Am I right? Can I get some hearts if you're with me? 
All right, so let me see if there's any questions real quick. Hi, everyone. Thank you for hopping on. I appreciate ya very much. All right, so let's go ahead and I don't see any questions off the bat. Oh, um, Jackie, are you making, what are you making them out of? Are you making them out of resin? If so, what kind of resin? If not, what are you making them out of? Uh, over, Donna, um, covered in a type of contact paper. Prime and paint, you don't want to prime or paint over the contact paper. Get you some goo gone, girl. Let it soak and then chip away at it with a scraper. Okay, heat gun optional, but scraper, yes. Goo gun, yeah. goo gun, yes, or similar type citrus remover. All right, so here we go. Here's our top. Here's what I didn't show you. Here's what I didn't show you. Okay, so check these bad boys out. Boom. These are rub-on transfers the, of the mini variety um, from Prima Marketing. Okay, and these are, I don't know the exact story with these, but I don't really care. I'm going to use them because they are not decor transfers, which are, you know, the typical big transfers we all use and love. They're also um, not on the regular, sh okay. they're in the limited edition or uh, low stock category on the website for retailers. So if you have a retailer that you know and trust and love and, you know, have a good rapport with, say, give me some of these before they're gone. There's only a few left. Um, or you can go on Etsy and search Prima Watercolor Fantasy. Okay, on Etsy. I don't know what you're gonna get if you pull that up on Google, but <laughs> Etsy, watercolor, fantasy, prima, boom. So they're just little rub-on transfers of the JB size, okay, of the mini variety. We're just gonna do um, some of the more colorful, you know, just pick and choose different ones. I like the purple, the oranges, the pinks, all that jazz. So um, I need my scissors transfer tool they come with a little popsicle stick but who I mean who wants to use a popsicle stick when you got a real mama jamma transfer tool or stick or a broken one. Oh, there we go transfer tool you can also use a little stick that comes with the uh, regular size transfers anywho let's bust these open scissors obviously so um, you can see here, I've got my Scully, I've got his cogs and all his mechanical parts, um, flowers. It's a little heavy on this side, right? Why did she put all that on one side? It's too heavy. Well, I did that on purpose, because guess what? I'm gonna balance out this side with the flowers, see? Now you're thinking, now you're thinking. So I love symmetry, but I, you know, asymmetry, well, let's see, how do, we, how do I wanna say this? So mirror image, type symmetry is not my, uh, it's not always my thing. I like to balance out, create symmetry by creating visual balance, right? So that's what I'm doing. Mirror image is fine, but um, that's not what we're doing today. So I think I'm gonna pull these purple and yellow, okay? For now, I'm gonna start with the bigger flowers because um, if I start with the Sorry, I can't cut and talk. C cut and talk at the same time. <laughs> I have issues multitasking people. All right. Um, you want to lay your bigger flowers down first. That way you're getting the bulk of your, uh, your cluster, your flower cluster. You're getting the bulk of it, you know, kind of set up. And then you can take the smaller flowers and piece those in where you want them, in between, you know, places where they need, empty holes, stuff like that. So... Um, bigger first and then graduate your way down to the smaller flowers and then fill in the details okay so I'm just cutting out all of these separately for now okay so let's go ahead and start with our biggest I'm gonna do this pink one here okay he's our biggest so like a regular transfer um, we're just gonna lay it down here I don't love that um, pistol or whatever they're called, so I'm gonna kind of 
turn it this way, manipulate that a little bit, probably cover it up with an old flower. Okay, so I've got my transfer tool. You can use anything. You can use a spoon, a plastic knife, a credit card, popsicle stick, paint stir stick, whatever you've got that's rigid and, you know, good for burnishing. Burnishing is a fancy word for rubbing on, okay? So don't let them fool you guys. Burnishing just means to rub. These, apparently, you have to rub a little bit harder from what I'm gathering here. Let's see. Are they going to stick? Are they going to stick? They're sticking. Just got to use a little muscle. Um, but like I said, these are the perfect JB size. What I showed you a second ago, and I can show you again in a minute. Those are, those are the only three designs of these watercolor fantasy ones there, there are. Oops, we lost the pistol. Darn. I didn't want that anyways. So, um, let's see. Go ahead and throw these on like that. <clears throat> so these are the three there are. I don't know what the exact story with them are. I don't know where they... I don't know. It's a mystery. It's kind of cool, though. I was on the Prima website one day, and I just saw them, and I was like, what? What are those? What are they holding out on me? And I asked, and apparently they're just, you know, some rub-on transfers. There's um, limited quantities, and they didn't advertise or really necessarily promote them so I don't know but so far so good right like the colors good it's got a nice white flood coat on the back so that it's opaque it's not transparent that's kind of one of the first things I look at when I'm getting ready to use a transfer on a dark color especially so uh, let's see let's check this one if we can get this one down peel up And I was really hoping to have time today to also get out our metallic paints and paint our details here. But it's pretty similar to what we did on our last live. I think that was our last live last Thursday. When I did the drawer faces like this with the skulls and the flowers, I know I'm so versatile. I have so much variety happening this week. Lots of skulls, lots of flowers. Who would have thought? Um, but anyways, love my metallic paints. Somebody, I don't remember who it was, but somebody said, every time you get those out, I get envious because I like watching you go through the, um, all the colors or, you know, rustle through all the colors. I do too. Whoever that was, I like it too. It's like, it's like a ball pit, you know, kids in their ball pits at like Chuck E. Cheese and that. They jump in and they're like, woo, balls. That's how I am with my metallic paints. I jump in that little bucket and I'm like, ah, oh, all the sparkly paints. Let's do a yellow one, shall we? Let's go ahead and do a yellow, right? Oh, I don't want this to get too patterny looking. So I think what I'm going to do is put it right. Eh, yeah, we'll put it right here. We'll make it not patterny with the, the smaller flowers. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to rub this one on and then we're going to switch on over and check on our molds. No, I don't think it's been 10 minutes, but I have them on the fan. So that, you know, that magic fan. I don't know what I'd do without that. Get nothing done. Okay, and these, yes, you'll need to seal these just like other transfers. Water-based sealer, polycrylic, clear wax. I like uh, Paint Couture satin top coat is my fave, but they also have a flat, dead flat, and um, gloss. Gloss sealer so i'm going to continue to fill that in i might come a little more heavy down the front like that um so it's not so you know bleh. but anyways so those are the uh watercolor fantasy rub-on transfers from prima marketing okay boom so okay are you guys ready for me to show you what uh are you guys ready for me to show you the um what we're doing on the other side with the molds. I know you're all dying, trying to figure out, what is she doing, what is she doing? Okay, I'm gonna show you now before we demold the other ones. Um, show you those real quick. It'll buy us a couple more minutes to get the, our molds um, set up and all that jazz, so are you ready? Okay, so we're doing Rusty Pipeline with flowers coming out of it. Yes, it's only half painted because the bottom half is going to be 
Firelight, which is a bright orange from Peyton Couture. Love it. I mean, teal and bright orange, it doesn't get a whole lot better. And yellow, look at my yellow lining, it's perfect. Perfect. Um, let me see, I have... Huh. Dang it. Dang it! I ruined my own surprise. Stupid. <laughs> Whatever, you can at least humor me. Um, you, I don't add color to the quick setting resin. I color my resin with paint, but not quick setting resin. You don't want to do that. You'll get a foamy mess unless you are looking for a foamy, not a mess, but it foams up when you add color or paint to it, um, which worked out when I learned that lesson the hard way. It was a happy accident because I was making faux cupcake bottoms. So when I added the paint to the quick setting resin, it foamed up and it looked like a cupcake, but I didn't have to be that lucky. I just was. <laughs> So it worked out for me, but I learned a lesson. Okay, so yes, rusty pipelines. See our rusty pipelines down here? And then I got the flowers shooting out into, you know, this innards of like a clock or something, like the inside uh, workings of some sort of mechanical beast. I'll give you a little closer up view. The resin, you just cannot beat the detail on the resin, man, I'm telling you. Right, am I right? Like modeling clay, any sort of air dry clay does not get that, that, it doesn't keep that detail, it shrinks and cracks a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and um, demold. We'll go ahead and start the process putting our molds on and then I'll probably peace out because you'll be able to figure out the rest. <laughs> but let me plug in my heat gun. I do wanna add, when I am um, attaching my molds, because I get a lot of people ask about this, attaching molds, what do I attach my molds with? A, that depends on the surface you're attaching to, okay? I always strive to attach my molds to a sanded wood surface. So at least scuff sanded, um, which this is, I scuff sanded this with the sander. And um, if I have to, depending on what my design is calling for, sometimes I have to attach the molds to paint, to a painted surface. Or let's just be honest, if it's an afterthought and you're like, eh, I want a mold there, you're gonna attach it to the paint, that's okay. But um, I use Gorilla Hot Glue to attach them to my wood, sanded wood surfaces, um, or primed, um, or tight bond quick and thick. If I'm attaching to a painted surface, I don't use the Gorilla Glue or any hot glue, but just a side note, I only use Gorilla Hot Glue because it's not your typical hot glue, it's the bomb hot glue. So Gorilla Hot Glue. No, they don't pay me to say that. I just love it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, tight bond, quick and thick is my other go-to. If I'm not in a hurry, I'll use that. Or um, if I'm working on paint, a painted surface, I use tight bond, quick and thick, and clamps if you need clamps. Or tape, you can tape them up too. So there's that. So let's go ahead and grab our molds. Let's go ahead and start with the rusty pipes because that's what we'll need to build from the bottom up. So for our rusty pipes, and hopefully I got what I needed here. If not, oh, you can't see that. Here we go. Now you can see. All right, cool. Um, oh, and somebody was on the, on the wall behind me. Oh, that is my um, faux brick staging wall. I have a tutorial on that on... Might be on YouTube now. CC Restyled, my YouTube channel. I believe I put it on YouTube. I'm almost positive. If not, it's on my Facebook page somewhere. My business Facebook page somewhere. Um, let's see. I need... Can you even see those amongst all this mess here? Here, let me get it. I gotcha. I got this. That way you can see better. Maybe. I don't know. White on white. Anyways, there's our rusty pipe. Well, it's not rusty yet, but it will be, right? These are so cool because you can paint them shiny metal, you can paint them rusty metal, corroded, you know, like whatever. So cool. I was trying to figure out a way that I could do like a pastel pink, pastel colored kind of um, steampunk kind of theme, but it was not coming together in my mind, as you can imagine. So check this out. How long ago did we pour these molds? About, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes ago? So with the amazing casting, and this is the only 
quick setting resin I use because I've used others and they're too brittle. They fall apart, especially with intricate molds. And they also don't stay as flexible, the ones I've tried um, for as long. So if I pull this out soon after it turns white, which means it's cured, it is a uh, very conform, you can conform that to a surface of like a curve um, over an edge if you wanted to, like, you know, you needed to spill over this side for about, I don't know, until it cools down. So depending on your atmosphere, uh, I don't know, I'd say 10 or 15 minutes, it starts to harden up to where um, it will become completely rigid when it's completely cured. But for now, um, after it's turned white, it is conformable. So if you are doing any sort of curved surface, that now is when you want to attach your molds um, because they will cure all the way and they will be rigid and hard and not so conformable at that point, okay? So I'm cleaning up the edges with my little sharp knife here. Sometimes I use my fingernail, but what do they say? Nails, your fingernails are jewels, not tools. Bah, try me. My fingernails are tools, right? Am I right? Can I get an amen? All right, so there is our spigot, okay, our little, little spigot. And what we're gonna do is set that right here. And basically I'm gonna start from the bottom up and I'm gonna build up um, for my spigot up to where the flowers shoot out, lay the gears. It helps to lay them all out, obviously, before you secure them with the glue. Before you commit to location, make sure you know where you're gonna put them. All right, so there is, oh, can you see? There we go. So I want it kind of somewhere near the bottom, so I'll just go ahead and set it there. Then we need to have like, maybe we do that on the edge. And then we need to have a shoot. Do we want an elbow piece that goes directly shooting up or do we want to take a pipe piece and shoot it over a little bit? Let's see what it looks like with our elbow piece just shooting straight up. These are also really easy to cut while they're, um, you know, right, fresh out of the mold. So sometimes if you have to adjust, like I'm gonna shave off just a little teeny 16th of an inch or so off this guy. That way it sits flush against this elbow piece. I don't know what it's really called. It looks like elbow macaroni, so that's why I call it the elbow piece. And then of course we got have this little Mario Brother kind of guy. You know those pots in Mario Brothers where they jump out of or jump into? This is my little Mario Brother guy, boom. Okay, so that will go there, but you know what? I think I want to shoot up a little bit of pipe, so I'm gonna go ahead and alter this pipe. I'm just gonna cut it. It's soft, so I can do that. I can use my scissors, I can use my sharp knife, but in that case, I'm gonna actually move this over a tad. That way I can use the other part of the pipe right here. So waste not, want not, right? Resonate free. Can I get an amen on that? Just cut it right in half there. Boom. And, oh gosh, Marcel's gonna get mad at me if I don't have on my little finger condoms for this. Shoot, I gotta grab them, dang it. I meant to tell her to remind me to grab my, they're little silicone finger um, protectors because she probably got tired of watching me burn myself or somebody's gotten tired of watching me burn myself at some point. So, so Marcel sent me some finger protectors, little silicone guys. I don't think I want that pipe quite that long, so we're gonna cut it down a little bit. The reason why I'm so attached to this piece of pipe though is because it's got threads. Can you see the threads on it? Wait, there you go. It's threaded, so realistic, right? I love it. I love it. All right, let's do, I'm trying to get it flush here. Well, that wasn't flush. Uh, let's see, and then let's just, oh man, that elbow guy is not really making sense. Okay, let's move this back over, replace our elbow. Then, um, then let's see if we can put this in between. Ugh. 
You know what? I have some from last night that will probably start to make all this make sense. Maybe I don't want that there. I don't know, people. I was going to try to do something fun and funky with you guys since, um, we, you know, it's, it's all fresh. We can do whatever we want. But um, at this point, maybe we just stick with our good old spigot. Is this the same? That's the same. Well. Oh, here's this. Wait, no, that's the same. Gosh, I got a lot of spigots. Oh, wait, no, this is different. This one's different. This one is different. Ooh, okay, let's add a little pipe. No, dang it. Sorry. Yes, I should have had this figured out, but you know what? Part of the fun of this is the process, so bear with me. Ooh, ooh, I just had an idea. So, I'm gonna lay these out where they're gonna go. I don't, I'm not even gonna need my silicone jobbies till after the uh, video is over because I just wanna lay these out as much as I can before it gets to be dinner time. And then I'll glue them on after. Okay, so let's do this. We've got those spouts, spigots, whatever you wanna call them. Then we got our elbow, where's our elbow? Elbow, where are you? Put our elbow there. Let's put a little bit of a pipe there. Who knows, maybe it's spewing rainbows or something. Then we got this one here. That, is that dumb? If that's dumb, you can just tell me. Is that dumb? All right, we're gonna go with this for now, okay? So we can move on. Actually, you know what, why don't I turn it? Let me do you a solid real quick. You're probably like, what is she thinking? We can't see that. Let me turn it around for you. Give you the money shot. Boom. Almost. Boom. There we go. Okay, so next we've got our gears, which I happen to already have some made, so we don't even have to demold, demold those quite yet unless we need some fillers. Look how big this one is. Boom. That's a big old mold. Okay, so we got some little guys here that we will clean up in a minute. And basically, what I want to show you with these gears or cogs, whatever you prefer, um, I'm laying down a base. Okay, so I'm not committing to a location for these yet. I'm laying down a base for my sprig of flowers or my little, um, what's it called? My little uh, uh, twig, branch, whatever you call it, with flowers. So. If I stick those on these and they don't have, they're not supporting underneath, you know what I'm saying? If they're not supporting my flowers and those molds are just kind of hanging out there, they have a better chance of popping off or, you know, they're harder to paint behind and all that stuff. So this no good, no good, no good at all. You want to make sure that you build up a little bit of a base for your flowers. So I'm gonna show you, oh, I'm gonna show you what I mean real quick. Okay, so these are our um, flowers. What was this one called? This one was called <sighs> something. Botanical Blossoms, okay? So Botanical Blossoms, one of my favorite flower um, molds just because it's so useful in so many spaces, areas, sizes, whatever. Versatile, I love me some versatility. So it's a little tall, right? Let's have them coming out of this guy. Nope, this guy. Yeah, this guy. It's a little tall, right? I mean, we could snake it around because guess what? It's fresh out of the mold, so we could snake it around if we wanted to, but we're not gonna do that. We are going to cut this right here so you can cut them really easily fresh out of the mold. I mean, it's a win-win situation. That way it sits flush with our pipe and it looks like it's actually coming out of there. We're gonna kind of curve it around this way and then I am going to cut off this top little twig here. It's a little, um, little bud. I don't, don't get sad. I'm not throwing it away. We're going to use it. I'm going to end up putting it over here for some balance to balance out this side, at least for now, I think right here. And then I've got some more little flowers here from that same mold that I'm just going to cut off that little unwanted piece. No biggie. And actually let's do this. See that? Boom. See how we got that balance that visual weight all balanced out 
And now we can just, you know, kind of piece these in where we want to support our little um, flower branch here. See how that's just kind of hanging off there? Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that profile, but we're just going to scoot that right underneath there. That little guy is going to support that other guy. Hey, guy, you can do this. You got this. Very supportive. Very supportive. And a couple more of these bad boys wherever I want. I'm thinking, though, I may, um, I may put this guy up on a little gear so he's got some dimension, okay? So basically, I'm going to continue placing these. I don't want them to look too patterned. And I want to use I want to use different sizes. That's the key. Okay, the different sizes. Don't think about it too much because then it looks like you did it on purpose, and it's supposed to look like you didn't spend any time on it at all. It just happened, right? With your hair, with your makeup, all that stuff, with your molds, whatever. So I'm going to continue to do that after we hop off here. Um, but I do want to show you these pretty watercolor floral molds real quick. So these are perfect to do while they're soft too because. I'm going to fill in the blanks and that may be overlapping. I like to overlap my molds. It creates interest and depth and um, it's a perfect time to do that while they are nice and pliable. All right, so these just need to be trimmed, glued, bam. I'm just going to put those sporadically throughout my little scene here, okay? And there you have it. You've got rusty pipelines growing flowers in a mechanical thing and a skull. That's my theme. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to, oh, okay. I'm going to look for a couple questions real quick because I saw some and then I want to see if I know somebody asked some that I tried to answer and then I, I needed an answer from them to answer. So let me, dang it. I ruined my own surprise. I'm still mad about that. Well, next time I'm gonna get a little curtain and I'm gonna be like, behind curtain number one, you can't see. Okay, well, I thought, do you have to spray the molds before pouring resin? Absolutely not. They are silicone, food grade. You can put chocolate in them. You can put them in the oven. You can put them in the dishwasher. You can put them in the microwave. You can fondant, put fondant in them. I mean, they're just a wide variety of uses and they peel out literally. I mean, you saw how I did that, right? They just peel out. If you wanted to spray them, you would be wasting your time and you would have just a mess to clean up. Um, oh, let's see. Yeah, plaster of Paris is not good for, okay, so plaster of Paris is not good for these little type intricate molds for, you know, this size. I use plaster of Paris for big molds, okay? Like concrete molds, um, uh, architectural type molds, like big guys. Okay. Um, these little type molds, you don't want to use plaster of Paris. It's not going to be the most ideal. It's brittle. You can't get the detail in the little fine, fine details. They just break as you figured out, I'm sure. And the irritator clay. Yeah, it's, a. Uh, it's, it's good for the more simple design molds. It's not so good for the intricate molds. There's some that would be absolutely impossible to do with um, air dry clay. So get you some resin. Um, okay. Well, I don't, I don't see any other questions off the bat. So anyways, I will, um, I'll check the replay, see if there's any more questions, but Thank you all for the kind words. I appreciate it. And I'm going to hop off here. I'll see you next Thursday at noon right here in the Redesign with Prima Facebook group. And uh, yeah, bye.